building a viable understanding of the mind is a task that it cannot be done by any single individual because as a single individual, you're not even going to discover Turing completeness in your life. It's really a multi-generational task that um, requires um, something like a thousand years of an unbroken intellectual tradition. And this happens very rarely in human history. Usually after a couple hundred years, there is some kind of revolution and uh, a, a bunch of armed uh, people storms uh, the libraries and uh, the house where the intellectuals are sitting and discussing and uh, everything starts at, from scratch. And then uh, it's being built often in a way that only emulates the understanding of the previous tradition instead of getting the foundations right. So you get scars in this understanding. And current Western intellectual tradition has been disrupted uh, multiple times and quite severely by cults, basically. And it's still recovering from that. And um, the problem uh, when you are ruled by a cult, as we have been for um, more than a thousand years, is that um, you have a different discussion about the structure of reality and ethics among the elites in the cult than among lay people. And uh, since many of your um, opinion makers and um, of your thinkers and so on are going to be recruited among the lay people, um, they might be working with a limited set of concepts and with a with the strange mythology to begin this. And the mythology is uh, that the cult is using to indoctrinate people to follow the cult and operate in a way that is consistent with the goals of the cult or a civilization that is in, in a cult-like organization. Um, that basically means that the mythology of that cult is contaminating the null hypothesis of every thinker. And if you look at Western thinking, this, uh, the superstitions that we uh, developed uh, based on the reading of Christianity, of uh, the, its uh, Hebrew mythology, is in some sense still the null hypothesis. And the null hypothesis has been pushed back. So um, the idea that it's uh, sufficient uh, to use uh, machinery to explain the mind is something that is not the null hypothesis in our society. The null hypothesis in some sense is that there is an external space uh, in which there are greater powers than in physics and that um, physics is a domain in which we basically play a game uh, that has been set up by a higher level agency that has created this game in which we are interacting and we are here temporarily, there's going to be an afterlife and so on. And uh, while uh, scientists don't uh, believe that anymore and so on, it is uh, still for our society the thing in which against which science has to push because it's somehow the null hypothesis that uh, our society has been working on for such a long time. The symptoms of the scars of meaning is that um, we have um, uh, some confusion about uh, how reality and mind are related, which leads to uh, naive realism that um, the world that we uh, experience is in the way in which we experience it, which uh, even has a, a form in philosophy, which is called scientific realism. Uh, then we have relational theories of truth, which assume that the uh, representations that you have are directly pointing uh, with some kind of relational error into uh, the uh, world of facts, which somehow exists in the physical universe, which gives rise to a very bro uh, broken basic ontology, because uh, it's very hard to take mental domains and then construct some fact, uh, sexual error that points into physics. Uh, there's going to be a rift between scientific understanding and scientific theories and personal understanding. And this rift is also in the mind of individual scientists. That is, when you look at the theories that scientists write down about how things work, and uh, you ask scientists privately how they see the world and how they experience the world, how they experience the relationship between the world, there's often a big gap between those two. It's also true for AI. There are very few people that do AI and cognitive science which realize that the things that they are describing is actually themselves, their own relationship to reality. And um, the conscious phenomenal experience, self, identity, mind, and agency are things that we all deal with uh, because we have to, right? This is something that we are operating with as individuals, but they are uh, pretty much unintelligible to our sciences. And uh, you will find that people in the cognitive sciences are very reluctant to talk about consciousness, phenomenal experience, self and identity, mind and agency. Um, and uh, there are even reasonable people very much at the root of our field or at the top of the field, which claim that it's outside of the domain of our sciences to really deal with these concepts in an adequate way. 
and uh, terms like spirit, soul, God, incarnation, trance, and so on are um, basically in the domain of superstition now, even though they once, I think, were more or less technical terms that were required to make sense of the way in which uh, we interact with reality. So we leave the domains in which these concepts have meaning to uh, people that are outside of the realm of our sciences. And it uh, takes a very long time to recover them and uh, rebuild them in a new framework. 